Operator. Operator, get me the office of John J. Malone. The American Broadcasting Company presents The Amazing Mr. Malone, an exciting half hour of mystery starring Gene Raymond. Our locale is the city of Chicago. The time, the present. And the hero of these weekly adventures, the amazing Mr. Malone. Malone is the name, John J. Malone, attorney and counselor at law. If you're one of our regulars, you know how fond I am of cliches. Tonight, I'd like to direct your attention to that oldie, The Devil Finds Work for Idle Hands. The idle hands in this case belong to a gentleman named Paul McKenzie. It isn't that Mr. McKenzie is lazy. He's just not working because he had an argument with the state of Illinois. Okay, back inside. Unfortunately, he came out a bad second. Oh, hiya, Mr. Drop dead, will you? That's the Chicago paper? Yeah. Let's see it, Wayne. No, I'm doing a crossword puzzle. You know a five-letter word for burglar? You trying to be funny? No. You see 17 across? Oh, Jimmy. Uh, what you want to do that for? I only broke the point of my oh, pencil. Wasn't that too bad? What are you doing now? Shopping the point on the window sill. Let me see that. No, no, cut it out, Mac. I ain't hurting you. Let me see that point. Yeah. That's not bad. You get a real shop on here. I always say concrete's as good as sample. Is that what you always say? Yeah, any day. When I was a kid, oh, I used... shut up. When do you draw kitchen duty again? Well? Tell me to shut up. Don't give me any smart answers, Wayne. When do you go on KP? Tomorrow. Swell. I want you to rob me a spoon. Spoon? That's right. Well, why should I? Now, look, Wayne, we're friends, aren't we? No. What's the matter? Can't you take a joke? All I want is a crummy spoon. Who's going to miss it? I'm not going to do it, man. Well, it's not like I was asking for a knife. I'm not going to... I said you are. (laughs) Well... What do you want it for? You gotta have a reason for everything. You just get me a spoon. That's all I ask. Hey, Wayne. Wayne, wake up. Let me alone. Come on, Dopey. Wake up. No! Keep your voice down, understand? Just get the knife, Mac. Remember the spoon you got me last week? Yeah. So loud it down. Oh. That's the way you sharpen your pencil. It turned out real keen, don't you think? Cut it out, Mac. Well, pay attention. You gonna bust out? What do you think? You're crazy. Like a fox. I'd just like to come along with me. No, not me. Why, you like it here? I got no complaints. Sure, you play it safe. And maybe if you're real good, they'll let you out in ten years. Well, you do what you want. You're darn right I will, and you're gonna help. Huh? You're coming with me. Oh, no. Now, wait a minute. Don't get me wrong, Wayne. I'm not that fond of your company, but I need another guy to work this. Can you get back in your cot and keep mum? Don't you open your yap or anything, understand? What are you going to do? The less you know, the less you'll have to worry about. Keep still. Hey, Daniel. Daniel. That's the trouble, McKenzie. Something the matter with Wayne here. Wayne. Wayne. I don't think he's breathing. What happened? I don't know. I saw him swallow a pill. You what? Yeah, about 20 minutes ago. All right, stand back. I'm coming in. Think maybe it was poison? Smile you, Wayne. Help me turn him over, Mac. Don't bother, Daniels. He'll be okay. You what? Too bad I can't say the same for you. <laughs> you killed him. Well, what are you waiting for? Applause? Let's go. Just a second. Yeah. Hi, Harris. Kenzie. Shut the door. Uh, oh, yeah. What's the matter, Harris? You act like you're seeing a ghost. It's your old boss, remember? But I heard on the radio. What? Well, the car with you and... Uh, what was his name? Wayne? Yeah. Went off a drawbridge near Joliet. Yeah. Well, I wasn't in it. We separated as soon as we got over the walls. Now, was there anything else? No. What about the guard I knifed? Oh, oh they say he's going to pull through. I guess this is my lucky day, huh? How did you get to Chicago? I rode the rods. Got me some soap. I want to wash up. Sure, Mac. Yeah. Thanks. What do you hear from Ruth? Ruth? 
Ruth Nelson, stupid. Oh, I, I haven't seen her in months, Mac. Thought I told you to keep an eye on her. Give me that towel. Yeah. Well? Well, what? What do you got to say for yourself? Well, be reasonable, will you, Mac? I, I couldn't follow Ruth around. Why not? Well, let's skip that for now. There's a lot more important things to do. Such as? Getting you out of the country. Oh, don't be a chump, Harris. I'm going to stay right here. Mac, you're out of your mind. You know, that's the trouble with you people who don't spend any time in jail. You don't appreciate your own hometown. You forget all the attractions. Oh, I got a beautiful girl right here in Chicago and about a quarter of a million in U.S. bonds. I know, Mac. That's fine, because I want them both here by 5 o'clock tonight. Yes? Hello, Ruth. Oh, this wouldn't be heaven's gift to the working girl, Larry Harris. Cut that clown, will you? I got a message for you. The big man's in town. The who? He just arrived. Well, don't you understand me? No. Well, he's standing right here for me pretty morning. Hello, baby. How are you? Who is this? Now, what do you think? Look, mister, if this is your idea of a gag, I don't think it's funny. What's the matter, Ruth? Don't you recognize my voice? I don't believe it. Have I changed much, honey? No, you look better than ever. Okay, Harris, beat it. I thought you wanted What's the matter? Don't you understand English? Go on, blow. Find yourself somewhere else to flop tonight. All right, Mac. Be careful, will you? You stop being such a worry ward. I'll be all right. Come here, Ruth. Oh, gosh, Mac. It's wonderful to have you back. You missed Papa, huh? I <laughs> guess. Why didn't you keep in touch with Harris? Oh, you know how I always felt about him, Mac. Eh, he's okay. Hey, that reminds me. I was so tickled to see I forgot to ask, where are the bonds? Bonds? Yeah, you know, before I went up. Oh, those. Well, I didn't bring them along. Why not? Well, when Harris first told me you were here, I thought he was kidding. Well, you can see he wasn't. I want you to pick him up the second thing tomorrow morning. What do you mean, second thing? Because i got something else I want you to do first. Who's the best mouthpiece here in Chicago? Well, I have no idea. When I went up, there was a fellow named... Uh, John J. Malone, what the boys used to talk about. Are you still around? Well, I don't know. Well, the first thing tomorrow, Ruth, you find out and make an appointment for me. What for? You'll find out when I talk to Malone. You know how I hate to repeat myself. It's funny you don't answer. Maybe, maybe Malone doesn't come in morning. Yeah. Hey, what are you going to do, Mac? Make myself comfortable while I wait. Yeah, I think this is not to do the trick. Well, what do you know? You see, old man hasn't lost his touch, huh, Ruthie? Matt, listen to inside. me. Inside. But, honey, I, I said don't... inside. All right, now, what were you going to say? Malone's not going to like this. We'll teach him not to break dates with yours truly. Yeah, I guess you're right. What do you mean, you guess? Aren't you sure? Well, I only meant... Wait a minute. Didn't you make an appointment with Malone for me? Well, of course I did. And how come he ain't here? I, I don't know. You're lying to me, Ruth. All right, so I am. I never called him alone. You didn't. Honest, Mac, I was only thinking of your welfare. I bet you were. <laughs> oh! Now, the next time I tell you to do something, do it. I don't need any masterminding. So that's the thing I get. Are you kidding? I got news for you, sweetheart. Even at Joliet, I heard a couple of stories about you. They were about me and Arnold Lucas. They were lies. What was that name again? Lucas? Come on, answer me. <laughs> Let me alone! Fuck up, Ruthie. I'm going to know the score if I have to break every bone in that lovely body. I'm warning you, Mac. You stay away from me. Oh, you're warning me. Go on, blast you, big ape. You put a finger on me and I'll put a finger on you and we'll see who does more damage. It was just one of those things. Just one of those crazy things. One of those Mr. bells. Malone? Yeah, that's right. I've been waiting for you out here since 10.30. Well, that's a switch. They generally wait inside. Pardon? Skip it. You're, uh... Susan Andrews. Well, what's on your mind, Miss Andrews? This 
Mrs. Hampton. Oh. I'm staying at the Reynard apartment. But you've still got something on your mind. Well, didn't we talk in your office? Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah, come right in, Mrs. Andrews. No, on second thought, stay right where you are. Oh, I hope you... Oh! Stop that! Is he dead? If he isn't, he's as reasonable a facsimile as you can get with two slugs in the brain. Paul McKenzie, isn't it? Who? Mackenzie, one of the men who broke out of jail yesterday. How would you know? I recognize him from his picture. Funny, I never would have. Who are you calling? The police, you mind? Oh. Uh, What's the matter? The line's been cut. All right, Mrs. Andrew, you stay right here till I get back. But what about... Mackenzie, the... I wouldn't worry. In his condition, I think we can prevail upon him to hang around, too. <laughs> Mine, Malone. Mackenzie was in the car with Wayne when it went off that drawbridge near Joliet. Have they recovered the bodies yet, Lieutenant? Well, and I know they never will. At least not until Mackenzie's, because it's Mackenzie's body is right here in my office. And Mrs. Andrews, and Mrs. Looks like nobody's home. I don't get it, Brooks. I left her standing right by the. Holy smoke, what happened to the body? What body? I told you, Mackenzie's. It was lying right there near the switchboard. Look, Malone, if you've got nothing better to do... You've got to believe me, Lieutenant. Why would I make up a yarn like that? That's what I'm wondering. But whatever your reason is, it better be funny. I tell you, the line was cut and... It seems to be all right now. They must have patched it. Oh, sure. Where was this Mrs. Andrews living? At the Rainer Department's. That's uh, Fleming 0700, ain't it? You're wasting your time, Lieutenant. Whoever removed Mackenzie must have taken her along for the ride. She won't be in. I know. There's only one question in my mind. Whether she ever was. Are you calling me Keep a... quiet. Ready to part, Mr. Good morning. You got a Mrs. Susan Andrews registered there? Just a moment, sir. Hello. Mrs. Susan Andrews? That's right. Hey. There is such a person. Is she there now? Let me talk to her. Wait your turn. Hello? Hello? Hello, Mrs. Andrews. This is Lieutenant Brooks of the Homicide Bureau. You ever hear of a lawyer named John J. Malone? Malone? No. I don't believe I have. Then you weren't in his office this morning. I don't see how I could be, Lieutenant. Your call just woke me up. Thank you, Mrs. Andrews. Your witness, Counselor. <laughs> You are listening to The Amazing Mr. Malone, starring Gene Raymond. The year 1950 marks the 12th anniversary of the National Foundation for Infantile Paralysis, founded by Franklin D. Roosevelt. The National Foundation for Infantile Paralysis, through March of Dimes funds, is still caring for thousands of victims, stricken by polio in previous years. This ever-increasing load must be met by March of Dimes campaign funds each year. The cost of medical care has increased. It takes more money this year than ever before to pay for hot packs that relieve pain, iron lungs that take the place of human lungs, paralyzed by polio, physical therapy to help the patient recover control of weakened muscles, hospitalization, nurses, and medical care that are often required for months and years. Besides, a way of preventing this disease must be found if our youngsters are to be free from the constant threat of crippling. To continue caring for old cases, to provide help for those who will be stricken by polio this year, to keep up the desperately needed all-out research program of tracking down the preventive and cure for polio, we must all give more generously than ever before when we join the March of Dimes. And now, back to the amazing Mr. Malone. practice criminal law in a city like Chicago, screwy things are bound to happen. What gets me is why they all happen to Malone. I rarely go to my office, and the first time I do in weeks, I'm met by a blonde named Susan Andrews and the corpse. Twenty minutes later, both had disappeared. And Mrs. Andrews was denying on the phone she'd seen either of us. After I got rid of Lieutenant Brooks, I chased over to the Rainer Departments. Yes? Hello, Mrs. Andrews. Remember me? Malone. Yeah, lover. It's Malone. 
Won't you come in? Try and keep me out. All right, Mrs. Andrews, what's this all about? What's what all about? Listen, Susie, I'm in no mood for evasions. You saw me find Mackenzie's body this morning. Me? Yes, you. Now, I want to know why you lied about it on the phone. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't often strike a woman, but in your case, Wait. I... It's coming back to you now. Why don't you forget it, Malone? Make believe it never happened. Have the cops think I'm crazy for the rest of my life? Oh, no. Now, what, what went on in that office after I left? Malone, please. I'll make it easy for you. You had a visitor, didn't you? Yes. Who was he? He didn't tell me his name. What did he tell you? Just keep my mouth shut. Otherwise... Never mind. I can imagine what otherwise was. Then what happened? He picked up Mackenzie's body and disappeared. Uh, it wasn't as simple as all that, Susie. You don't walk around the streets of Chicago with a dead body on your hands. It might cause talk. How did he get rid of it? He had a car waiting near the freighting. Then you followed him. Well, uh... Don't lie, Susie. You must have. What was the license number? I, I didn't think to copy it down. I'm warning you, sweetheart. Let me get my... All right, Susie, you've been a great help. I think I can take it from there. Well? I'm looking for a gent named Larry Harris. What do you want? My name is John J. Malone. Oh, it still leaves me in the dark. I don't see why, Harris. You were up to my office this morning, weren't you? Where'd you get that screwy idea? You own a 49 Buick, license number 8L463, don't you? No. You better inform the license bureau. According to their records, the car belongs to you. So what if it does? Well, it was parked near the freight entrance to my building today. Your building? Well, I thought the press cut was owned by some corporation. And you were there. Supposing I was. Well, if you'd admitted that before, we could have saved a lot of time. What did you do with Mackenzie's body? Strictly between us, Malone. I don't see how that's any of your business. Well, you're wrong, Harris. When someone uses my office for a slaughterhouse, it concerns me vitally. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose when you look at it that way, you've got a beef. Would uh, 500 bucks take care of it? Only if I can take it out in information. Oh, listen, Malone, let me give you a little tip. Nobody's been hurt. Except McKenzie. There's no skin off of your nose. Forget it. And if I don't... Someone's liable to get sore at you. And who might that be? Oh, I don't like to mention names, but it might very possibly be me. No, no, you don't. Look at my arm. What's the matter, Harris? Can't you stand a little pressure? Get it out, Malone, you... You're it. I don't want to convince you I mean business. Now, what was your tie-up with Mackenzie? You can go... Come on, spill. We were friends. He was holed up here last night. Why did he want to see me? I don't know. I, I, I sure. I, I tell you, I don't know. Well, would you know what happened to all that money he had stashed away? What money? Mackenzie was serving time for a payroll robbery. They never found the dough. I never saw a penny of it. And who did? <laughs> Spent it all on his girlfriend before they caught him. That sounds like a physical impossibility. It was close to a quarter of a million dollars, Harris. Well, you don't know this girl. No, but I'd like to. What's her name? Ruth Nelson. That's one more thing. Did you kill Mackenzie? And then go back to your office to remove his body? Oh, well, what do you think? I don't know, but maybe Ruth Nelson can help me arrive at some satisfactory answer. <laughs> Waiter. Waiter. Can I help you, madam? Yeah, I'd like... Wait a minute, you're no waiter. I still wouldn't mind serving you. Now, I'd say offhand you're the scotch and soda type. Uh, very easy on the soda. That's pretty good. Can I buy you one? Aren't you afraid I might have a jealous boyfriend? Well, if you have, you probably know the best way to handle him. <laughs> Sit down. Thanks. Uh, waiter, two scotch and sodas here. What did he call you? Why, did he sound insulting? Your name, Malone. Well, I was keeping it for a surprise, Ruth. Beat it. Now, what kind of hospitality do you call that? I didn't turn you out when you dropped in at my office. What do you mean? Weren't you there this morning with Mackenzie? No. Uh, you'll have to do better, Ruth. Hmm, I couldn't forget that perfume. Did Mac send you over to apologize? Why should he? Didn't he tell you he slapped me around? What'd you do, walk out on him? Well, wouldn't you? Well, I wasn't going steady with him, so it's hard to say. Well, where does he get off accusing me of two-timing him with Arnold Lucas? Weren't you? No. Mac doesn't believe me. He can check it with Arnold. You'll find him at the Granger Hotel. Yeah, I kind of doubt that. Incidentally, Ruth, you wouldn't happen to know why Mackenzie wanted to see me in the first place. Didn't he tell you? He couldn't very well, lover. When I first saw him, he was dead. Dead? Murdered, to be exact. Just a gag. Hardly. Listen, Malone. Arnold had nothing to do with it. He said he did. Well, I thought... If you did, Ruth, that's good enough for me. Who is it? Telegram for Arnold Lucas. Oh, oh, won't you be kind enough to slip it under the door? Uh, sorry, mister, you have to sign for it. Ah, 
Just a moment. Yes. Hello. You're not from Western Union. Well, I tried to enlist, but they wouldn't have me. No? Who are you? Malone's the name. John J. Malone. Malone. What can I do for you, Mr. Malone? It's a long story, Lucas. Mind if I make myself comfortable while I tell her? Oh, please do. Fine. May I offer you something? Just a couple of answers. You see, I'm a lawyer. Oh, how interesting. Yes, you get to meet a lot of dull people that way. Now, you'll never guess how I got in touch with you. Perhaps not. You ever hear of a man named Paul McKenzie? Once or twice. He's dead. How sad. Well, dry those tears, comrade. I think I know where to locate his murderer. Yeah, and how did you accomplish that? Well, I had several fine leads. An automobile license plate led me to one Larry Harris. Harris? Mm Mm-hmm. No, I don't believe I've had the pleasure. No, but you have a mutual friend, Ruth Nelson. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, she's a wonderful gal, Lucas. I'm so glad you appreciate her fine quality. I'd be an ingrate if I didn't. After all, she gave me you. Not for keeps, Malone. Ah, hello, Ruth. What are you doing here? You're the boy who knows all the answers. Yeah, judging from that gun in your hand, there could only be one. Never let it be said that you can't put two and two together. Hello, Arnold. Darling, so nice of you to drop you. It's a pleasure. Well, if I'm on your, if I'm in your way, folks... Come back here, Malone. I just thought you two were... Like to be alone? Oh, no, no, no. We'll have plenty of opportunity for that later. I don't know, Lucas. You better act fast before the police grab you. I don't think there's any danger of that. You're wrong, Ruth. I got your boyfriend dead to rights. And that's where you're wrong, Malone. Because in a couple of minutes, he'll have you dead, period. You are listening to The Amazing Mr. Malone, starring Gene Raymond. And now, back to the amazing Mr. Malone. There's something disconcerting about a woman with a gun, particularly when she aims it at you. Even Arnold Lucas, who is strictly a bystander, was fascinated. For what seemed like hours, we all stood there with no one saying a word, and then Ruth went and broke the spell. All right, Malone. You got any final requests? Now's the time to make them. Yeah, now, Ruth, you know you're not serious about this. What do you bet? But I've got nothing against you. No, but you've got plenty against Arnold. Who told you he was wanted in New York? No one. Oh, you figured that out all by yourself, Mr. Malone. Oh, he's a smart boy, Arnold. <laughs> Wouldn't take him long to guess if Mac went to his office. It could only be for one reason. He wanted Malone to make a deal with him for the police. Well, he was wasting his time, Ruth. The state's attorney never would have accepted it. Why not? Mackenzie owed the police plenty for the payroll robbery and a little extra something for that jailbreak. Lucas would really have to be wanted pretty badly for the cops to forgive and forget. You never can tell. No, that's true enough. Well, now that you know it all, Malone, what do you intend to do about it? Oh, that's up to you, Ruth. How right you are. Since it's my move. I better move faster. Yes, you, no. Come let on, go. Let go. Let go. I, Arnold. Arnold. Get out of the way. I didn't mean it, Malone. Let me take a look at it. What's going on here? Oh, come in, Harris. You're just in time. I heard a shot. What happened? Can't you see? I didn't mean to kill him, Malone. Well, cheer up, Ruth. You didn't. Oh. It's just a scratch, but you're a very careless girl. Anyone would have done the same in my place. I had to protect him. Well, I guess you can't blame her, Malone, when a gal goes for a guy. There's nothing she won't do. Even try to cover him when she's seen him commit murder. Well, we should know that better than you, Harris. Meaning what? Meaning you're the guy she's in love with. You are the one she's covering for. What are you talking about? Sorry if I let the cat out of the bag, Ruth, but when it comes to murder, I'm just a great big blabbermouth. Hello, Susie. Remember me? I uh, hope it's not too late that I came over and regale you with the saga of my triumph. Oh, I heard all about it on the radio. Ah. Well, come in anyway. But thanks. Does the music bother you? No, no, I think it establishes a mood. <laughs> uh, they said on the air that Harris killed McKenzie. They said right. But why? I thought they were friends. To the end. Only Harris saw to it that McKenzie's end came a lot sooner than it normally would. When Mackenzie went to jail, he left a quarter of a million dollars worth of loot with his girlfriend, Ruth Nelson. And she and Harris... Uh-huh. Well, where does this Arnold Lucas fit in? Oh, he was just a patsy in this little affair. Ruth was fattening him up for the kill. 
She led Mackenzie to believe that it was Lucas who was his rival. When all along it was his boy, Harris. Uh Uh-huh, that's it. Well, what put you on the right track? Ruth. She was too anxious to make sure I didn't overlook a clue. She was the one who sicked me onto Lucas originally. Then she volunteered the information that he was wanted in New York. And then on top of that, she tried to get me to believe that that was the reason Mackenzie came to my office originally. Oh, wasn't it? Of course not. Mackenzie may have wanted me to work out a deal for him, but never on that basis. He'd be the first one to realize the police would never accept him. Well, then what would be the deal? (sighs) Well, of course, I'm guessing now, but it's the only thing that makes sense. The state's attorney originally offered to let Mackenzie plead guilty to a lesser crime if he turned back the money he heisted in that payroll robbery. I guess after a year and a half in stir, Mackenzie thought better of it. So if you put all that together, plus the fact that Ruth tried to kill Lucas right in front of me... I thought that was an accident. Oh, don't be silly. That gal knew what she was doing. Why do you think I had such an easy time disarming her? Oh. And does that answer all your questions? Uh-huh. Good. Now we can start on mine. I, uh... I didn't have time to ask you before, but what were you doing in front of my office so early in the morning? Well, as I told you, I wanted to see you. About what? A divorce. Ah. Well, I uh, don't generally handle divorce actions, Susie, but for you, I might make an exception. Suppose you tell me about your husband now. Well, he's handsome, charming, cultured. Everything a woman could want. Hey, wait a minute. You sound like you're still in love with the guy. Oh, I am. What? Mm-hmm. After I saw you this afternoon, I thought it over and I called him. He should be here any minute. <laughs> oh, that's nice. It was all my fault, Malone. I made a mistake. Mm. I was just counting on him to call me first. Yeah. Well, don't feel too badly, Susie. We all make mistakes. I was counting on something, too. Why, Malone, where are you going? Uh, home. Thank you, and good night, Mrs. Andrews. Have you heard the story of the boy who never found time to play? He learned if you plan your work properly, you'll have time to kill. I'll tell you all about it next week, so why not pick me up in my office at the same time? I'll be waiting for you. Good night. Gene Raymond will start as John J. Malone with Henry Morgan as Lieutenant Brooks. Our program is written by Gene Wang and directed by William P. Rousseau, music by Basil Adlam. The Amazing Mr. Malone is based on a character created by Craig Rice and produced by Bernard L. Schubert. The events and characters depicted in this story were entirely fictional, and any resemblance to actual places or people living or dead is entirely coincidental. And now this is Richard Tufeld asking you to listen next week. The Amazing Mr. Malone has come to you from Hollywood. And now, a listening reminder... Tonight, Luella Parsons takes you to Berlin by transatlantic wire for the world premiere of the Hollywood motion picture, Francis. Don't miss the Luella Parsons show tonight. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.